no two material in the universe conduct heat in the same what? In the same way. Absolutely not. No way. Okay, so if you know the specific heat capacity of one material, at least you can know. Look at the chart. You know what? I think we have iron or cobalt or water or whatever material we have. Okay? So the name was specific capacity. And what was the symbol? Nope. Q was for the heat itself. Uppercase or lowercase? We're going to go always with lowercase. Okay? Good. Uh, so what did we say here? Come on. What did, what did we write in our notes? Basically, this quantity indicates how good slash bad exactly a substance able to gain or lose thermal energy, heat, but let's say thermal energy. Okay. So um, it's the amount of energy that has to be what or given to a material to do what to it? To raise or heat it up by how much exactly degree Celsius of how much mass of it? Or equivalently, either you're supplying energy to heat up or taking energy to what? Cool it down. Yes, exactly. That's why, that's why I gave you how good, bad it gains or loses thermal energy. Okay? All right. We discussed this. Those two things are what? What state of matter are they in? In normal uh, room temperature, they are both liquid. This one is what? In room temperature? No. And those are in room temperature, definitely what? Solids, metal solids for sure, except for what? Except for glass is made of what? A combination of silicon and oxygen. When you're actually walking on sand, when you're actually walking on sand, you are literally walking on what? Silicon oxides all over the place. Okay? So, liquids, solids, and metals. What's happening to the values as you start from up here and go down here? What's happening to the magnitude of the value? Goes down. Which means what? Which means as you go down, you get higher density, higher density of solids. Means what? Particles are closer together. Which apparently means what? What's happening to the numbers? Again. So which one is easier to heat up? Water or the iron kettle you're using to heat it up? Yes, apparently, do you remember the, uh, when I asked, like, I think Hannah yesterday, told me that the division of this number by this number was how much? 9.2. 9 what does that mean? In the time it takes, the what? In the time it takes the water to heat up by 1 degree, iron has heated up by 9.2 degrees. So which one is easier to heat up? Metals in general, absolutely. Okay, so today, so yeah, less energy needed to heat up for uh, closer dense solids. Okay? All right. Everyone, let's do a demo. Come on. What was the equation for uh, heat transfer? Come on. Q equals? Okay. What's the question asking? How much? Remember what you should always watch out for when I ask questions beginning with? How much? What, what do you remember me saying about how much? Your final answer must be given to me as a what? Negative or positive? Even if it turns out to be what? Negative from the calculation, you owe me a what? A quick therefore statement, making it positive as a magnitude. Good. How much thermal energy is required or needed to raise the temperature of two kilograms of water by 10 degrees Celsius? Okay, I have a question here. Uh, first of all, are you given the mass? Is it in standard kilograms? Good, that part is done. Are you given the C? But are you given the type of material? Great. Can you always check the chart? So effectively, practically, you always have that value. Did I give you what temperature it started with and what temperature it ended at? I didn't. All I told you was from wherever it started to wherever it ended, it went up by how many degrees in between? 10 degrees. Here's a question for you. Could this have gone from 120 to 130? 120 to 130. How many people say yes? So I'm asking, could I use TI and TF if I wanted, uh, initial temperature and final temperature, to be 120 and 130? Remember, the difference is 10. How many people say yes? Okay. Come on, seriously, no trick. How many people say that, yes, since you just need two things different by 10 degrees, you can use TI as 120 
and TF as uh, 130. How many people say yes? Come on. So you all agree, right? Well, guess what? You're all wrong. Yeah. Yeah. You're all wrong. Yeah. You're all wrong. Why do you think, why do you think agreeing with that exact statement with the numbers I proposed is wrong? What numbers did I use? Do you have water or liquid at 120 and 130 degrees? You see? Remember? No, no hold on. So how, how many people, by me saying that, understand, understand how I tricked you? What's up? No, no, no. I said no mathematical trick. Uh-huh. I said no. I've been doing this for a while. Okay? I propose that you go from what to what? 120 to 130. Here's the thing. Can you still get the specific heat capacity of water vapor? Of course it is. The problem is, do we have it in the chart? Now, nah, the chart gives you uh, water as a what? As a liquid, which means what? What, temperatures range, what temperature range are you bound to exist in if you want to play using that number? Zero to 100. So what range of values could I have used, for example? 50 to 60. 92? Technically not, because 100, you're actually what doing what we call the state change like the phase change. So you could do what, 89 to what? Do not, do you see what I mean here? So watch out for the what, for the beginning and ending temperature. Then, you're, you're allowed to, but here's my question. Do you even need to pick a number? The equation already has what? No, no. Why do you have to bring it back to what? TF and what? TI, invent numbers, Subtract them only to get back what? Do you see what I mean? You already know the difference between temperatures. Why invent two numbers and what? Confirm the difference ever again. Do you see what I mean? You already have it. Go ahead. Let's plug in the numbers. Okay. Uh, what's the mass? Come on. Two. So just two. Just uh, two kilograms. By the way, it's interesting. Water is a what? In this case, a uh, solid or a liquid? Do you ever measure liquids in kilograms? Come on, when you actually do a chemistry experiment with Miss Young, whenever you're measuring what? Liters or milliliters. But we are physics people, so we don't care for volume, because technically liters measure what? Volume or size or capacity. We are talking about what here? Mass. So technically, we're talking about what? Get whatever volume of water that gives you how much mass of it. Make sense? OK. By the way. Interesting thing, does anyone know the density of pure water, like the distilled water you use? Not the tap water. No, 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 no. Pure water, H2O. Exactly. No impurities, no, no minerals, no salts, nothing in the water. No. What's the density? One kilogram for every what? One kilogram for every liter. So that means what? If you need two kilograms of pure water, how many liters do you need? Two, because it's one to one. Always like that. Okay? So. Uh, Two, oops, sorry, two, go ahead, two, times what? What's the number for water from the chart? You don't have to write it in scientific notation. 4.180 4 times 10 to the 3, or 4,180 joules for every kilogram, for every one Celsius degree you want to heat it up with. That's why water takes so much heat to heat up. Times what? What's my delta T? Is it negative 10 or positive 10? It, OK, look at the question. They're saying what? Raise. So you're going from a lower ti to a higher t. Uh, sorry, from a lower t to a higher t. So you just put 10. What's the final answer? OK, so 8,200. Sorry, uh, 360, right? With another six, with another, in what? In? Yes. 600. In what? In? Joules, because you asked for energy. Uh, let's talk about sig figs. What sig fig situation do we have? Uh, 2.0 is 2. 10.0 is? How about this guy? From the chart. From the chart. How many sig figs does it have? Uh, yeah, three. Four. Is it 4.18 or 4.180? How is it given to you in the chart? Come on, in the chart. 4.18, so how many? Three sig figs. But is that a variable or a constant that's measured for us? 
No, no, this guy. That's a constant. Do we ever uh, care about constant sig figs in our calculations? No, I care about what this guy and this guy. And apparently, which one has a lower sig figs precision? Two. So you have to keep it to what? Two sig figs. So you have to cut it here. What does this become? Six bumps up the three to a four. So you get yourself eight, four, zero, 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 two. Wow. For two liters. Two liters of water. How much is two liters of water? Um, this is about 700, 700 milliliters. So roughly how many of this do you need to get 2,000? About what? About three of these. To heat up three of these in one bucket, you need to supply it with 84,000 joules of energy. What does that tell you about water? Does it heat up easily or slowly? It needs an insane amount, well, compared to other liquids, an insane amount of temperature to raise its temperature by a certain amount. Good? All right. Okay, next question. A glass window, just like there, for example, everyone, a glass window right here, okay, well, um, with a mass of how much? 20 kilograms, is heated up to a temperature of how much? 30 degrees by the sun. So during the day, the maximum temperature, if like uniformly is distributed within this slab of glass, is how much? 32. So let's say for everyone, listen up. Let's say for example by 2 p.m., which probably could be the hottest time in the day, 2 3 p.m., this gets up to how much degree? 32 degrees. Okay. How much thermal energy is what? Release means gained or lost. Lost by the exact same slab of glass until it's what? As it cools down to how much? 5 degrees Celsius. I know maybe at like 1 a.m. So over what? Over the cooling down process, how much energy, everyone, eyes on me, how much energy has what? Has escaped from here. Okay. Well, let's see how much. All right. Do I still use the same equation? By the way, is the question asking what is the thermal energy or how much? Did they actually say how much? Which means what? Even though it's going to be a loss, it's going to be reported as a what? Even though it's going to be a loss, which is a negative number, it's going to be reported as a what? As a positive magnitude. Thank you. But we still have to do the equation. So Q equals what? Q equals MC. Question for you. Should I use the delta T version now or the TF minus TI? Do I actually know the final initial temperature? I do. So might as well use the bracket right now. Okay, what's the mass? 20. Who's got the uh, specific heat capacity of glass? It's in the chart. How much? So, so in standard form, 840. 840. Okay, what's my final temperature late at night? Five? No. Okay, so you're giving me the delta T. So I am basically building up the subtraction. 5 subtract 20, uh, I mean 32. Great. So it's 20, 840 times negative 27, which makes sense because my final answer should be negative something in joules. Who's got this? Come on. 4, 5, 3, 6, 0, 0. Okay, sig fig first. What kind of numbers am I given? Um, Two sig figs, three sig figs, two sig figs. So the whole thing has to be cut at two. So right here. So what would this be? Yep, negative four, five, zero, 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 zero in joules. So if I just said, what is the what? What is the heat transferred, or what is the uh, thermal energy transferred? You can just say negative four, or what's the Q? 40, negative 4, 5, 0, 0, 0, 0. But they said what? They said how much? So how much heat was lost over 9 or 10 hours? 45, sorry, 40, sorry, 450,000 joules. Does that make sense? Well, let's think about this. Is this a big mass of glass? Yeah, it's a 20 kilogram slab. It's like 45 pounds. So that's a big mass. Also, also, um, by the way, is the value for glass really super high or average? Yeah, compared to water, it's quite low or average. However, 
how much temperature change did it go through? A lot. Almost 30 degree, what? Almost a 30 degree Celsius drop. That's why the number is what is huge. Because this number is big, kind of, in mass. And this number is big. And this is not super small either. So that's why. So the proper answer should be 45, 450,000 in what? In positive, because it's a magnitude. But I'm just going to leave it like that. Is that making sense so far? OK. Now, so far, have we talked about one object heat transfer or two object heat transfer? So far, we just talked about here's an object. You either give it energy or what? Take energy away from it, OK, which is like this class. So let's talk about what now? Come on. The two object heat transfer. When two objects, when two objects are, OK, OK. Remind me again, everyone, what are the three ways? Heat could be transferred. Conduction if they what? Okay. Conduction if they what? Physically touch. So technically two solids or two liquids, but touching. What's the one that they don't physically touch, but there's a medium in between? Liquid or gas. That would be convection, like when you cook. And when they not only touch, but there's pure vacuum between them, there's only one thing that could go, which is what? Electromagnetic waves or radiation. Thank you. So when two objects of different temperatures, are, we're going to assume they're always what? We're going to assume they're always conducting, which means, that, sorry, in, in contact. Um, thermal energy is transferred from colder to warmer or warmer to colder always. Yeah, why would it not go from, remember the first day? Why would it not go from cold to warm? Be, to, okay, so you can argue from what? From a balancing point. If one is warm, everyone, if one is warm and one is cold, if this one loses, it's going to get even what? And this one's going to get, that is what, that is wrong in two, on two accounts. Number one, am I getting closer to the balance or further away? Okay, that doesn't make sense. What's the other uh, argument is that, what does warmer mean? Are the particles, particles vibrating a little bit or a lot? How about colder? So why would this one steal from this one to make it even what vibrate less so it vibrate more? No, if anything, it should be the what? The other way around. This needs to what? This needs to heat up. Well, this needs to what? To cool down, such that the temperature has to reach what at the end? A same identical value. By the way, question for you, true or false? This will be on your quiz today. But here's a freebie. True or false? When two objects come in contact, the final balance temperature is exactly in the middle. Could it be? So let's say, for example, I have an object at 10 degrees, and I have an object at 20 degrees. I all say, it's always going to go to 15. Is it always like that? Could it be? Could 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 somehow could some sometimes could somehow the temp, could somehow the final temperature end up being exactly in the middle between them, like as a perfect average? So it could, but does it always have to be that? Perfect. Good. Good. Okay. So the first thing we gotta say is what uh, transferred from warmer to well, I don't like to say warmer and colder, hot. Cold, warm, cool. So the cooler one. Okay. However, okay, question for you, everyone. Within this system made up of only how many? Two objects. What does that mean? Whatever thermal energy one object loses must be what? Must be partially or fully gained by the other one. Because if it's partially gained, what does that mean? Some energy did what? seep out or leak out of the system. That, uh, that violates what? Conservation of? How could I fix the situation? Do you remember how I told you chemical engineers fix situations of when the energy balance is not achieved? What do you just, everyone look, what do you just do to your system? You just redefine it to include more what? More, yeah, thank you. Everyone, remember, everyone, look. What do I have in my hand here? Marker, okay? Eventually, what happened to it? Did it gain or lose energy? So if I only assume that my system is just the marker, is, is the conservation of energy obeyed or violated? If my system was only the marker, the marker what? Lost its energy, which is bad. What do I need to bring in to make sure that the energy is still contained within the whole thing? The holder thing. Oh, and technically also the what? 
the air around both of them because there's drag, right? Again, if you're worrying about what, like nanojoules of difference. Do you see what I mean? So if the two system, if the two system thing, if the two system thing did not fully what capture all of the energy, what do you need to redefine? I don't know. You need to include something else. Maybe the air around them or maybe the ground they're both touching or something. I don't know. Okay? But we're always going to assume we have how many objects in the universe? Just what? Just two. One loses, the other one, and vice versa. Okay. So within this two object system, no energy is to be, um, how should we say it? And no energy is to, no energy is to be uh, lost, lost, lost to the outside. Outside. And no energy is to be gained from the outside. From the outside. Okay. In other words, whatever thermal energy is lost from one object is to be what? No. What's that? Opposite of lost is gain. Or you can say what? Uh, oh, sorry. It should be gained, but what did I say? Two. So, transfer. Good catch. So what's the equation now for two objects? OK, let's go. All right. um, we said that whatever ob one object loses, the other one what? OK, so everyone, let's say, look. So let's say me and Arabi are a system. Object one, object two. Between the two of us, we have $100. So somehow it has to be what? Some I have, some you have, right? Let's, let's say 40, 60. 40, 60. I'm going to go down to 30, which means you have to go up to what? 70. If, what did I start with? 40. I went down to what? What's my change? Final, no, negative 10. You have to remember that basically my final minus initial was what? Was negative. So I went from a final, I went from an initial of what? 40 to a final of 30. What's 30 minus 40 is negative 10. How about Arabi? He went from an initial of what? 60 to a final of 70. So his final minus initial is what? Positive. But so what's my change? Negative 10. What's his change? What's negative 10? So my, my question now is, if my change is negative 10 and his change is positive 10, what happens if you add my change, not my money, not my money, my change, my change, to his change. A full change of what? Even though the full money is still what? 100, right? The full money is still what? 100. We don't care about the full money. We care about the what? My change and his what? My change is negative. His change is, but they have the same what? The same mag, the same magnitude, which means they do what to each other? They cancel it. And that's exactly how the equation is going to be. Sorry, it's going to be what? It's going to be. Uh, we're going to say what? We're going to say Q gain plus what? Q lost is equal to what? Yes. Mo the money gained by him was positive 10. The money lost by me was negative 10. Positive 10 and negative 10 is a perfect zero. Okay. Um, how many Qs do I, am I showing you? I'm showing you two Qs. Did we cover equations for a single Q? Yes, we did. Perfect. So what's the equation going to be now? Oh, sorry, my bad. Hold on. Yes. OK, look, everyone. This is now the full equation. M1. What does M1 represent? Mass of the object 1, my mass, times, whoops, times what? C1, what's C1? The specific heat capacity of the first object. Times what? Hmm. What was the original equation? Delta T. We're not going to use delta T anymore. We're going to use the full what? T final minus K. 
T final minus T initial of which object? One or two still. Plus. What do you think the second one's going to say? M2, mass of object 2, times what? C2, times what? The final minus initial temperature of object 2. All equal what? Okay. I have a question for everyone. I did use M1 and M2. Listen, I did use M1 and M2. I did use C1 and C2. I used the T, uh, T initial 1 and T initial 2. How come I didn't use T1F and T2F? Hannah, listen up. Because the only thing they will eventually agree on is the what? Is the final what? Is the final temperature. So when two things have the same final temperature, do I need to use a subscript one and two? Okay. Give me an example from forces that two different things had a common thing at the end of it. Come on, from forces. Huh? Tension in what system? Fully. Remember what uh, the question all said? Find the common acceleration of the system, right? Because the whole system is moving what? Differently or together? If one of them accelerates one, uh, in, a one in one way, the other one does what? Accelerate in the same way. So there's no need for what? A1 and A2. Both of them were just what? A. Same thing here. They might start at different what? Come on. They might, they actually, not might. They have to start at different what? Initial temperatures, but they always agree on what? Which means there's no need for five subscripts or another subscript. Can you count how many different variables are there? Different variables, like distinct symbols. Okay, so Hannah's saying seven. Does anyone have a, who's saying four? You're saying four, okay, hold on. You said four, you said seven. You said what, sorry? Six, okay. Do we have any other numbers? Okay, I'm not telling you which one's right, which one's wrong. Seven, four, six, come on. Any other uh, suggestion? Okay, tell me, tell, huh? Eight, okay, A. Okay, let's start with Juman. Juman, tell me, listen up. Tell me what your eight are. Come on. Why did you say eight? But why did you say eight? Huh? <laughs> okay, question everyone. Why? Come, why? why? She, okay, probably Juman said eight because she's counting how many different things? Okay. Why did you say four initially? No, no, okay, tell me. I, I like that. I, I, okay, both mass one and mass two are what at the end of the day? Masses. But I didn't ask you how many different kinds of quantities are there. If you're thinking of different kinds of, of different physical quantities, what physical quantities are here? Mass. Cap specific capacity and temperature. So literally just what? Three physical quantity of the universe. But how, ma how many, if, if you give this to a math teacher, how many different mathematical symbols are here? The answer is seven. Why seven? M1 and M2 potentially could be what? Different. So that's two. C1 and C2 could be what? Different. So that's up to what? Four. T1, uh, T1I and T2I. By the, by the way, question for you. Can you do this problem if T1I and T2I are the same? Do you ever go through heat transfer if the two objects touching have the same temperature already? No, you're already at, at what? You are already at equilibrium, which means what? Would the system ever change? Nope, it will stay at that temperature. You've already achieved what? You have already achieved balance. So, but not potentially. For this equation to be applied, those two have to be what? So we're up to how many now? Two, four, six. Is this one is the same? What if it were different? Then how many values I would have? Eight. But we built the whole idea on them what? Leveling up. Done? That's it. Everyone, what's the other 
way that other teachers do it. And I don't like it. Interesting, uh, Yasmin's brother, apparently we were doing heat yesterday, and he wrote this on the board. Uh, okay, raise your hand if you can see it. Okay, so it's M2 TF minus T1 equals, okay, I, I screwed up with it. He had this before. Oh, yeah, he for, Yusuf, Yusuf forgot the C. So basically, he was not paying attention to the what? That different materials, what? Conduct thermal energy differently. But let's say that the Cs are there. Let's say, everyone, that the C2 is here and the C1 is here. Which then would be, <laughs> do you see why it could be confusing to write it like that? But let's say he wrote the whole thing correctly. How is that? Different and yet related to this. Again, I'm going to move this whole thing here. Why does, okay, so why, okay, so we know that mathematically when you move all of that side to the other side, all of that term, sorry, to the other side, you should get what? No, no, from there, you should get a negative. Can you tell me the physical reason that you should get a negative? I'm saying that mathematically speaking, we all know if I move this entire block, here, this has to become what? Weird. Why does it physically have to be negative? Because then it would have what? Lost. And loss means what? Has to be a negative. The beautiful thing about this one, everyone, the beautiful thing about setting up this one, you couldn't care less which object lost and which object what? You just let the what? Let the system and the math take care of itself, and whatever you get at the answer is correct. The problem there is that you have to decide which object what gained and which object or you have to pay attention to which object started what high and which object started low and then you are you have this range to play with make sense that's why i never teach it that way i teach it that way okay let's uh, let's do it do the first demo problem come on Baha, read the first demo problem for us go ahead Good. All right. So, uh, how many objects do we have explicitly identified? Two. We have an aluminum block or whatever, and we have immersed in what? Alcohol, which happens to be of what state? Liquid. Okay. How much mass do we have with the aluminum? Two kilos, a two kilogram block. How much mass do we have of the ethyl alcohol? 1.5. Okay. Do we know the C's of each? Do we know the C of each? Can we just look it up? Good. So we know four things so far. Um, do we know the initial temperature of the aluminum block? Like right as it was dropped into the liquid before it touched. Actually, we do. And then immersed. Do you see what I mean? I, I know. This seems like a final temperature, right? Because it's heated too, right? Oh, yeah. But you know, think about it. You heat it up to 100, and then you what? You dropped it in the what? In here. Now we're starting the experiment, right? So what was the initial temperature of the aluminum block, everyone? Before it touched the liquid, 100. Right before it touched it, what was the temperature of the liquid? 18. Somehow my final temperature has to be between what? 18 and? Can you just add 18 to 100 and get the average in between? Why not? First of all, do these two have the same mass? Do they have the same specific heat capacity? No. Tell me, everyone, tell me what the ethyl alcohol specific heat capacity is. It's a liquid. It's on the high end. 2,500, roughly. What is it for aluminum? 920, is it? 920. If you divide 2,500 by 920, you get about 2.7. What does that mean, everyone? What does that mean? Aluminum gains or loses heat about three times easier than what? Than ethyl alcohol. Do you see what I mean? So that means what? One of them is going to lose heat very what? Very quickly. And the other one is going to accept it very what? Slowly. So you can't say it's going to what? Perfectly average up, right? 
So you have to do the math for this. OK, everyone, this is the, my uh, preferred way of doing this. Let's write, everyone, look. Let's write all the variables. M, should we call them 1 and 2, or should we use proper subscript? What subscript could you, what, uh, subscript could you use for aluminum? Come on, something that, a, OK. How about we use the actual chemical symbol? What's the chemical? AL, but with what A? Cap, capital. How about alcohol? A, we can just say AL, but the A now is what? Small. All right. So, everyone, let's go. M, AL equals 2 kilograms. How about the temperature of AL? Obviously, you could say, do I need to say T-A-L-I, like initial? Not really. We always understand, if you do not use final, Anything else is initial. Uh, what's the initial temperature of aluminum? How much? 100. What's the specific heat capacity of aluminum? Uh, you said 920, I believe. Yeah. By the way, the only thing that you don't need to bother writing the units of is what? Is C. Because what's the unit? It's joules per kilogram per Celsius. You can just write 920, OK? All right, next one. What's M A L? Mm. Al alcohol. Now, how much? One point five. You said that the no, not not, not the C. My bad. The uh, whoop. The T. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, you can write the T. I'm just gonna erase this guy. Uh, the T of it was kept at eighteen Celsius. Um, C of it. So two, four, six, zero. How many values do I know? Six values. The whole thing has how many anyway? Seven. I just need to find what? The one missing one, which is the what? The final temperature of what? That's why I write it in the middle. All right. Do we have a blank slide for the calculation? No? OK. OK. Um, really? OK, everyone. Yes, thank you. Oh, yeah. OK, everyone. Uh, if I, I should have given you extra slides. Okay, everyone, if you have small handwriting, fine. If not, you can use the what? The two blank slides from here. Everyone from here, under the demo problems of the one object heat transfer. Okay, all right, let's set up the equation. So M, A, L, C, A, L, T, F minus T, A, L, T, A, L, plus M, small A, L, C small, TF minus TAL equals what? Come on. The whole thing added together is equal to zero because energy is conserved between them. OK, let's plug in the numbers. Um, this is 2. This is uh, 920. This is TF minus 100. Plus, this is 1.5. This is, uh, you said 2460, I think. And this is TF minus. Physics is done. Math takes over. Can you tell me what to do next? Solve this. Solve for TF. Relativity. Go. Ah, who would like to give me the first step in cleaning this up? By the way, there's a multiple things you can do. Does it really matter which one? Yasmin, what do you want to do? If you are trying to guide someone like in a relaxed way through this, what would you advise them to do first? Yes, let's clean this up. What's 2 times 920? 1840. Do you even touch the bracket yet? Not yet. Take it slow. TF minus 100. Plus, what's 1.5 times 2460? 3690. Now what? Do I need to keep the bracket? Do I, can I open up the bracket? Go for it. So we're going to do the lines. This line, this line. Expand, 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 expand. OK. What's 1840 times TF? Just what? 1840 
here. Minus, well, this is an easy one, 1840 with two zeros. Done. Plus, I'm, I'm expanding. Who's got 3690 times 18? 60, 6,000, 420. Any one person agreement? Just write check. Okay. Okay. Uh, what's 1840 plus 3690? So I'm going to get the TF here, and then I'm going to move and add. So let me add this. 0 plus 0 is 0. 9 plus 4 is 13. Carry the 1, 7. Hold on, one, five, yes, sorry, five. I just added this guy. That's adding the TF because collecting what? Collecting like terms or like powers, but let's say like terms. And then I need to add the magnitude of this guy to the magnitude of this guy and then ditch them to the other side. Who's got this? Uh, it's going to be negative if I keep it on the same side, but I'm going to move it there anyway. You see what I mean? You're right. Adding two negatives still gives you a what? No, no. Hold on. Adding two negatives gives you negative. And then you take that combination and you ditch it to the other side. Sorry, just give me the digits. Two. Agree? Anyone? Just one right, one hand up. No way. Forget the minuses, Jenna. Add this guy to this guy. That's it. You should get this one. What do I do now? Divide what by what? No, not always. Again, don't get fixated on big by small. Divide the single number by the coefficient of the variable. All right. Yes. How much? Uh, what's the sig fig uh, lowest thing in problem? Two? All right. So 45. 45 what? So if given enough time, they should what? Level off to what degree? 45 degrees. OK, question for you. What if you, hold on. What if you did not do this whole process? What if they were like, you know what? It's going to be exactly in the middle. All right. Can you add 100 to 18 and divide by 2? Go ahead. Okay. Give me the average of two values. Go. What's 100? That's going to be 59 degrees. Let's say you did not do any of this insane work. Let's say you said, I have 100, I have 18, I'm going to get the dead on average, like the one exactly in between. What's 100 plus 18 divided by 2? 59. How different is it? Quite different. 14 degrees higher. So that answer is wrong completely. But can you, everyone, pencils down. Let's justify why 45 degrees makes sense. Okay, everyone, check this out. Let's do a scale thing. Look, uh, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna open up. Okay, everyone, uh, what was the highest one? Come on, 100. What was the lowest one? 18. Where did we end up? Okay, can you tell me is 45 closer to 18 or to 100? It's closer. Okay, give me the difference. What's 45 minus 18? Come on. It's got to be what? 27. So this one went up by how many degrees? This one went down by how much? 55 degrees. Because both of them leveled off at how much? Is this visual making sense now? 
18 degrees, 100 degrees. This one dropped 55. In the same time, this one only went up how much? Okay. What was at 100 degrees? Come on, everyone. The aluminum or the ethyl alcohol? Guys, pencils down. Complete focus, please. Which one was here? The solid or the liquid? Which one? No, no, here. What was at 100? The solid block. You know what? Check this out. The solid block was here. Nope. This one was, was what here? The what? The liquid. What's the heat capacity of this guy? 920. What's the heat capacity of this guy? 2,460. It's about a ratio of one to two and a half. What does that mean? For every step, this guy goes up, this guy goes roughly what? Down by more than whatever this one gained. So what does that mean? This one is gonna go through a lot of change, while this one's gonna go through what? Less of a change. Boom, that makes sense, okay? Uh, so, oh, but okay, everyone, yes, me saying the density of the liquid is less. It happens to be less, but that technically has nothing to do with what? You could still get a what? You could still get a solid that what? That doesn't lose as much as the liquid. Do you see what I mean? Don't, don't think of density. Just think of the fact that because the numbers are that different, this one went through a minimal change. The, okay, everyone, did this one gain or lose? Lost. This, this one lost so much because it's what? It's so easy for it to lose. This one is so hard for it to what? To gain. So that's why this gained slower than this one lost. Let's do the last one. Look, they're telling you that first you took the metal bar. You took this metal thing, everyone, and you put it in what? You put it in boiling water. And you left it there until what? It gained how much temperature? Everyone, does that make sense? Yeah, because the water is kept always at what? When it boils? 100, which means what? In time, this one will also become at what? At 100 as well, if you give it what? Enough time. Okay. Once it got to 100, Yasmin, what did you do? Uh huh. Look, yes. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna waste some juice. Everyone, when I took it out, what was the temperature? A hundred. When I took it out of the boiling water, it was as hot as the boiling water, which was how much? And then, yes, me go. What happened to the bar then? It was what? Immersed in. So that means what? That juice right there, before that block touched it, was at what degree? How much? 20. The mixture, after a while, reached a final temperature of how much? Question for you, Yasmin. Does it make sense to be at 35? Even if we did not do the calculation, does the 35 agree with the two limits of the temperature? Is 35 between 20 and 100? That's all I care about. By the way, it's closer to which one? Okay, I, could it have ever balanced off to 15 degrees? But 15 is less than what? Can you ever go colder than the coldest? Can you ever get hotter than the hottest? Which means what, you always have to be somewhere in what? In between, is 35 in between? Yes, done. What's the question? What's the specific heat capacity of the bar? Or what kind of a metal are we using? Do, do you see how I could ask you that question? What kind of metal? You have to get the C first and then look through the chart. Okay, everyone, let's uh, list our val uh, values. What subscript should we use? Come on, we have two objects. What subscripts are, are good and represented? Come on. Hmm? So M of what? Like M, M, and M. What should I use for the first one? MB or M bar? Sure. How about the other one? Yep, MW. Go ahead. So what was the mass of the bar? Mass of the bar is four kilos. Mass of the water is how much? 
You're not given the mass of the water. Uh -huh. You got to think. You are, do you measure a mass with milliliters? What? Where did you get that from? Aha, uh -huh. you see what, what did you remember? I told you, pure water has how much density? One, one kilogram to every one liter. How much are you using? 500 milliliters. How much is 500 milliliters? Half a liter. How much mass does half a liter of water uh, have? 500 grams, or just basically what? 0.5. Is it making sense? One to one means 0.5 to five. I might do that sometimes. Oh, okay, question. What if I was not using water? What if I using um, oil? Could you, could you just, just say, say then, oh, 500 milliliters of oil? That's also 500 uh, grams of, uh, of mass. No, because water and oil do not have the same what? Density. You know that oil floats up, which means oil has a what? Higher or lower? Less density. So I need to give you the density, and then you what? Can crisscross and find the mass. I, by the way, in first year engineering physics, they are going to do that. They're doing now the unit of fluids, all the floating, sinking, how much, like how much, they, get, they give them a question like, you have a styrofoam piece, a styrofoam piece that you place in what? In water. It sinks partially. And the question is, how much of it is what? Under the water surface, and how much is it what? That depends on the what? How much density difference is between. And that matters a lot. So you need to understand density, volume, and mass are always playing together in a what? In a triangle. All right. So uh, what was it? 0.5 kilograms. Okay, uh, Cs. What's the C of the bar? Do I know it? No, that's the one I'm trying to find. So that's my question mark. What's the C of water? Come on. Yes. What's the temperature of the bar right before it touched the juice? Hmm. Like it was heated up to how much? No, nope. the bar, the metal. Yes, 100 degrees Celsius. What was the temperature of the water right before the bar touched it? Before the bar touched the water. Yeah. No. Very far is the what? Reaches a final temperature. Yes. See? Word problem. You have to know how to read. So uh, 20. And Tf is? 35 degrees. Do I still use the same long equation? Yes, I have nothing in my disposal to use but that. All right. Let's change things. Go ahead. So uh, that's going to change. That's going to change. That's going to change. And, and. OK. We used what? We used Bs. B, 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 W, W, W. All right. Uh, what's the mass of the bar? 4. C of the bar. I have no idea. So just call it C. T of the bar. Sorry, T final. 35 minus 100 plus mass of water was 0.5. C of water was 4180. Tf was 35 minus uh, what? Uh, 20. That's going to be actually easier than the one we did because I don't have to kill a lot of brackets. Lots of them are just numbers. All right. Um, this is 4CB times what? What's 35 minus 100? Negative. Yes, because it went through a loss. Negative 65. Plus, what is this whole thing? Well, this one at least is 15. So you just need to multiply 20, 0.5 by 15. By that, or in whatever order you want. Who's got this? Three thousand something? No, no, no. Sorry. Yeah, three. So three. How do you solve this? Remember, you're solving for CB. Yes, clean this up so you get what? Negative uh, 260. Question, 
Which one do you move to the other side? Does it really matter? No, it doesn't. But maybe we should use the what? Yes. You're right. How much is the answer? Uh, what's the cyclic situation? Two? 1.2 times 10 or 120. This is a C value. What's always the unit for C value? Look, look at the chart. Look at the chart, the top part of the chart. Joules per kilo per Celsius. Because remember, it's the amount of energy you need to heat one kilogram by one Celsius. So you just write it like this. Look, everyone. Joules per kilogram. Um, by the way, it's a habit of some teachers to put what here? A what? A dot, because technically these are multiplied. I'm not going to care if you put a dot. Does this answer make sense? Usually, solids have what kind of a heat capacity? High end or low end? Look how low this one is. 